It's 6.10 a.m. Welcome to the day in my life. Let's jump in. Good morning guys, welcome to the day in my life. We're about to jump onto the charts. It's about seven o'clock right now. Gonna go ahead and work with the group, start to prepare, share the technicals, get everything prepared for our trading day. Then we're gonna jump into the YouTube live stream, which you guys probably watch on a daily basis. That starts at eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and grind out an hour of technical analysis. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of today's video. We have some exciting things planned. Enjoy the day in my life. Under that four safety, the juice on the short comes in under 19K, right? This is where it gets juicy to the short side. Right, under 19k. Right, that's where the that's where the floodgates. All right, guys. So we just went ahead and finished the live stream here. It's around 8:50, and around this time is where I start to dive into the Discord community and start to talk with the group. We talk about our game plan for the day, our technicals for the day, and around 9:10 we go ahead and join the voice chat. So 9:10 a.m. I'm in that voice chat, and we are trading from around 9 o'clock to around 12, right in that general area. Today, I am going to go ahead and get a haircut today because you can see I have a mop on my head. So we're going to be leaving the house right around that 12 o'clock time. So I'm going to take you along for that ride. We'll go get a haircut, go maybe get some food, and uh, pretty much see where the day takes us from there. Really, there's really no plans after that. So let's get this trading done. Let's see how the day goes. I'll take you guys along for the ride. Let's jump into it. Guys, uh, we went ahead and we did some swing trades. The market has not yet opened. It's around 9.03 right now. We took some swing trades yesterday on Amazon. This is our Discord community, obviously, where I post my swing trades. And uh, you guys can see right here, we've been holding some swings on Amazon since the 13th. And we took more of them yesterday. We took some Amazon uh, 170 calls, took 15 of those yesterday around, around noon, 12.54 p.m. I'll go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see the time. You can see right there around that 12.54 time frame. Uh, we took those in the group, and obviously today... Uh, Amazon is absolutely ripping. So I'm gonna put it up on the charts here. You can see right here, Amazon, huge rip in the pre-market because of that retail sales. I think a little bit because of that Walmart earnings. And here is my broker. You guys can see right now what I'm holding before the market opens. I'm holding some Amazons, holding some Nvidia swings. And right now those are up around, uh, give or take around eight to $9,000. So big move here uh, for the swings before the market opens. And uh, the next deal here for me is the live trading. So what an awesome morning with the swing trades. That is how the day starts. Let's get into the live trading now. Uh, I'm probably going to hold the next week's. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably hold the next week's, Drek. But I'll probably start taking some off the, uh, the this week's. Definitely. Damn, double the account. <laughs> nice. Double the account on Amazon. All right, so now your goal after doubling your account is keeping it. Okay, that's a great, that's a great little double right there. Now you keep it. That is a very interesting 19.4. Let's be watching that. Meta on a little retest hold coming in. AMD rejected 145, so that's no longer interesting. Hmm. Waiting to see if this I'm waiting to see if this Nasdaq shows me a reason to want a long on this 194 level. I have the QQQ options chain open just in case that Nasdaq wants to hold 194. Starting to see something form here, but not not yet. Too early. It's too early. What a hold this would be. What a hold this would be. Q 
QQQ471 calls, looking for that 19.4 hold. This is just a break and retest of 19.4. I have to trade this. If I don't trade this, then I am, I have no strategy. That's pretty much in my mind how it works. If I don't trade this, then I'm just not trading my strategy. So I'm giving it a shot. Let's see if this holds 19.4. Stop loss is right under 19.4, man. If we break under 19.4, I'm out. This would really be something if that makes it that clean. That'd be a break and retest for the ages here. Don't love that candle. Not in love with the candle, but the candle is still not that important because it is above 19.4, right? So you can see, right, those candles, they get you sweaty, but you can't take action here until that 19.4 breaks. This is what the strategy is all about, right? We got to hold this until that 19.4 breaks, and then we take profits on the pushes to the upside here. What a beautiful 19.4, man. <laughs> what a beautiful 19.4, though. I'm going to take a little bit more off the cues because of that, actually. Guys, I'm taking more off the cues of 25%. I don't really like that. All right, guys, congratulations. What a move. What a day. So I was considering taking you guys out to lunch, but this is what I usually do. I usually jump on the stove, cook myself three eggs, a little bit of toast, a little yogurt parfait, a little strawberry, a little blueberry, a little granola, a little high protein granola. Saves me money. That's what I usually do. I thought, you know, maybe we'd be fancy today for the day in the life, take you out to lunch, but Let's keep it realistic. That's what I used to typically do. I'm here, I'm cooking around 12 o'clock after my trading day. And so we're gonna go ahead and dive in and do that. And then we will jump into the car and go get this mop off the top of my head. That is a must. You must have that on eggs. Just wanna let you know. All right guys, so here it is, the Desi breakfast. Little yogurt, little eggs. We're gonna finish this up real quick and then we're gonna head out. All right guys, so unfortunately, not today, but <clears throat> there she is, but not today. She's staying in the garage. He's staying in the garage. Options insider, baby. So if you guys didn't know, we are in sunny Florida. It is 98 degrees out. It's pretty wild. I'm already sweating, stepping into this car. We're headed to Oldies Barbershop. I got a buddy from high school that I pretty much grew up with playing soccer. Oh, I should put on my seatbelt. Hold on. I gotta put on my seatbelt after I make this turn. We'll try not to crash here today as I hold a camera in my hand, so. If you guys witness a crash, we'll have it all on. Uh, we'll have it all on camera. But uh, yeah, so we're heading to Oldies Barbershop. Buddy's gonna cut me up. He always does every. I don't know. Maybe every two weeks, I like to go. So heading there after that, uh, probably head back to the house. You know, maybe hit the gym. I think we'll probably hit the gym, and then uh, do some trading. So if you guys want to stick around, we'll do uh, the trade recaps. We'll go over the live trades. We'll talk about the trades from today, and then we'll sort of wrap up the video there because after that. It's pretty much it, man. Maybe see my family, see some friends, but there's really nothing else besides that. So try to fill this day up with wherever we can. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's, uh, let's focus on driving. Jesus. All right, guys, so just got done with the cut. Shout out Eric, always doing a great job. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and head back to the house now. You know, in terms of like, if I hold positions, I wanted to go ahead and mention this. I think this is a great time. Do I hold positions when I'm out and about on the ha like on the day, right? If I'm going to get a cut, if I'm going to lunch, wherever I may be, am I still holding some positions? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, I will check in on them during the day. Uh, I will hold a position that I'm comfortable with, right? I'm not going to go ahead and take huge size and let it be and not focus on it on the intraday. Um, I'll always use TOS, the mobile app, to check in on the charts, make sure nothing crazy has happened, make sure we're not, uh, you know, tanking the market, something has changed. Uh, if there's economic data, like let's say FOMC, and I know that there's going to be some craziness around that midday time, then no, I'm not going to hold positions. 
Uh, but on a day like today where really nothing has, you know, nothing crazy is going on, I'll make sure to check in, make sure I, you know, know what's going on. And uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the current positions. These are the current positions I have. Go ahead and try to auto-focus on these. Um, so right there, the current position, sorry about that sun. I think in a second the sun will go away. Just one second as I turn here. So there you go. Um, there's the current open positions. Go ahead and zoom on that. And uh, so I'm just always checking in on TOS, on interactive brokers, making sure everything looks okay. But yeah, we're driving. We're gonna head back to uh, head back to the house, and I will catch up with you guys then. All right, guys. So I want to go ahead and introduce you to the Desi Merch Factory, which doubles as the guest bedroom. All right, beautiful, beautiful guest bedroom. This is where all the magic happens. So. This is where we grab the slips, right? This is where we grab the options inside our stickers. Beautiful, right? Zoom in on that. Um, and this is where we have the merch. So let's go ahead and take like a, a nice little large. This is a uh, new design, need money for trading design. Need money for trading. Large, right? We give that a nice little, nice little fold. Throw that right into the slip, right in there. I don't know if you guys can see this, but yeah, right in there, packaged with love, going off to one of you guys. We got a few orders to get done today. Um, a few need money for trading, a couple break and retest profit. I know it's probably flipped on your screen, but nice one there. I think we have some, oh, we have some of these too. Forgot about these. If you guys like this, if you like to trade, I love my wife, but we got to get a little bit closer. It says, I love it. I love it when my wife leaves so I can trade. Love it when my wife leaves so I can trade, right? I know you guys are probably trading with your wife over your shoulder like, oh my God, you lost $1,000 today? I can't believe it. So yeah, <laughs> if you want to grab some merch, guys, it's all packaged with love here in the Desi Work Factory which is also the guest bedroom. Get some of these done and move on with our day. I gotta clean this up, huh? Uh, gym time. We're gonna go ahead and make a little amino energy. This stuff's pretty good. Not too much caffeine, no bullshit, just amino energy. I like it. Um, gonna make a quick uh, little pre-workout, head to the gym. We'll go back to the, uh, the office, do a little trade recap. Talk a little bit about the trades today, get on some live trading, let you guys see all that good stuff. I'll sort of walk you through how I do all that. I'll do a little, I guess I could sort of show you behind the scenes of how I make the videos and edit the videos and all that. After that, probably it, man. That might be it. So if I think of anything, of course, and I do anything today, I will bring you guys along for the ride. But right now, make the shake, go to the gym. We'll do a little post-workout protein shake. We'll hit the charts, hit the computer, get the video going, and then we'll call it a day. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, head to the gym. And this right here, this is the gym car right here. So we're gonna hop onto that. Oof, oof, she's pretty. All right, so hop onto the cart. All right, guys, so we are done with the gym. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run over to a place nearby the house called Crisp and Green. Really good, sort of like Chipotle, but really healthy. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Grab a bowl, get some good food after the gym, and then we're gonna head back into the house, go into the charts, talk about the trades from today. So uh, yeah, let's do it. All right guys, so we made it onto the couch. Here is the, uh, the bowl from Crisp and Green. Absolutely delicious, chicken, avocado, Cucumbers, pickled onions, uh, hard-boiled egg, bunch of really good stuff in there. And uh, this is around the time I'm just going to go ahead and chill. Watch some, uh, watch some YouTube. I love my YouTube. 
my YouTube is basically like cars, gaming, and some trading stuff. Milk Boys, Jin Jinxie, love Jinxie, funny guy. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much cars, trading, and sports, and yeah, gaming. That's my YouTube. That's my uh, For You page. So yeah, sit back, enjoy some food, watch some YouTube. This is around 4 o'clock right now. Market just closed. And uh, then we'll jump into the uh, jump back into work. All right. So information you probably do not care about, but uh, I just finished the recording of this video. It was about 30 minutes long of content and my power went out. And so I lost it all. So we're going to go ahead and do it again. Welcome back to the stew. Welcome back to the office. We are back here. I hope you guys are enjoying some of the uh, day in the life. We got the haircut. You saw my morning routine, the breakfast, the coffee, the espresso. You saw the haircut. You saw the lunch, the gym, sort of the normal every day for me, guys. Nothing wild, nothing extraordinary, just trading, being healthy, staying healthy, I think very important. Having that routine, I think very important. Your routine in your everyday life definitely rubs off in your trading and the decisions that you make. So I do challenge you guys out there, if you're having some struggle and having some problems being routine and having a routine in your trading and being disciplined, I challenge you to do it in your everyday life. I promise it does help. I know it sounds cliche, but it is very important. So what you guys saw today sincerely is what pretty much every day looks like for me. Besides, let's say I go do some other things at times, maybe hit the driving range, maybe I hang out with friends, maybe I see the family, you know, maybe on the weekends I do something, but that everyday life, that core day is what you guys saw today. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the trades from today. We're going to go ahead and break them all down in Tradezilla. We're going to go ahead and share that year-to-date P&L that I know you guys want to see. So we're going to share that. And then we're going to go ahead and share the live trades. You're going to see the live trades as well. And then we will wrap up this video. So let's go ahead and jump into Tradezilla. And so we can see what happened today. So I'm going to go ahead and move my face over here. Um, and you can see today, this is August 1st, to August 15th. This is my month to date. And so far, my month to date is about 176,000. Uh, let me go ahead and real quick pull up the Demo Pro. I got to pull up my Demo Pro, my little draw tool. Um, and then let me adjust this screen for you. One second. There we go. All right. So month to date. 176, what a crazy month, 2.6 profit factor, trade expectancy, win rate 63%, which is a great, uh, I think a great win rate, win rate. Uh, very happy about that one. Today, you guys can see a $24,000 day realized, um, and if I pull up my broker, you guys can see on the day, uh, I'll go ahead and drag this over, this is my broker, this is today, you can see I had about a $26,000 day, uh, realized about twenty four. dollars and then the net um, net liquidity up to 253. And we are going to run through every single one of these trades from today here on Tradezilla. Made about 7,000 on Qs. Made about six. Still uh, realized about 7,300, but still holding some NVIDIA. Amazon, you guys can see I realized about 4,300. Today I made about six, but I was down on it day prior. AMD, I realized about 3,100 on some short terms. Still holding some swing trades. Uh, Amazon realized 594 and then finally lost some on SPX today. And we're going to talk about that SPX loss because there is a very good learning lesson that comes out of that trade, a very good learning lesson. So if we dive into today's tr trades, you guys can see this is the uh, six wins, one loser, gross P&L, commissions about $1,000, 851 That hurts, but that is the name of the game. That's what it takes. Win rate 85% on the day. Uh, let me go ahead and move my face once again, just so you can see everything here. Um, and these are all the trades. So the first two trades were uh, swing trades. Actually, the first three trades here were all swing trades. And what a percentage on that Amazon trade. Um, this was a swing trade from yesterday. These are some swing trades from the day prior. And you can see still holding some of those that you saw in Interactive Brokers. And what a 274% awesome. So some swing trades that we're going to talk about in a second. That SPX trade, that is something we will talk about. Qs, what an awesome trade. This was a sick one from today, off 19.4. And then some AMD trades, I will share those all on the chart. So let's start with the Amazon swing trade right here. 
Let's start with this Amazon swing trade. This was a big boy, 274%. Let me explain to you why I took this trade. I entered this yesterday, and we got the absolute squeeze that we wanted today. Let me explain to you why I took that trade. So going ahead and getting over to uh, TOS. You guys can see we're on TOS. Let me go ahead and proper set this up proper. And it is now pouring outside, so hopefully my power doesn't go out again. Amazon, right here. It is the break and retest once again. The break and retest strikes again. And man, do I love trading this setup. It's just such a beautiful thing to look for. It's so consistent. And I teach it every day on this channel. You guys hear me talk about this every single day. My strategy does not change. You know I look for the same thing every time. So previous highs, one is 68.77. Rejections, 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 and rejections. 168.77, this was also the gap fill level. So we had a perfect, clear as can be, rejection level at 168.77, which I, if I go to the daily chart, was also, if I go to this daily, you can see that this was this high right here before the gap fill, right? So the high that needed to break was 168.77 before we can get into this gap fill. And man, has this been beautiful. So if I go down to that 15-minute chart, you are going to see how clean that previous rejection point, which was that 168.77, bam, bam, and bam. Look at how clean yesterday this thing held above it. And right there is the definition of a break and retest. Previous rejections, break, retest it, long it at the retest with good risk reward, and today we get absolutely paid on this trade idea. Perfect break and retest, perfect trade. Love to see it. That was Amazon, and that was the reason for both of these trades, the same exact reason for both of those trades. Why am I holding NVIDIA? Why did I swing trade NVIDIA? Let me go ahead and share that with you right now. It is, again, the same exact thing. If I go to the 30-minute chart on, on NVIDIA, you guys can see very clear rejections, 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 $108. On Monday of this week, if we zoom into this, we had a perfect hold over 108, the previous rejection points turning into support on a break and retest and a hold. I entered these trades back on Monday. I've been holding them ever since. NVIDIA holding above 112, holding above 116, and I still hold them into today, but I have been scaling off into this push. But it all stems from a break and retest of a very clear previous rejection point that we broke above, we held above, we confirmed above, and that's where I take my entry points. Because at that point, I have fantastic risk to reward, right? Fantastic risk to reward. If we're going to hold above a previous rejection point, I'm going to look to see if that is a new entry on the long side every single time. So that was the NVIDIA trade. It's the same exact. You can see how similar those two trades were on both Amazon and NVIDIA. They were the exact same trade ideas. So if I go to the next trade, that was SPX. And this is where the learning lesson comes in. And this is a fantastic example of what we talked about in my last video, which was about being comfortable in your position sizes. I was not comfortable in my position size. I had too much size in this trade. It sort of got away from me. I was adding into it, and I got too heavy. I should have backed down, but I didn't. I just went ahead and I took the trade off break even, down 2.8%. A mistake. And when I talk about these things, guys, I want you to know, when I talk about these things that I teach you in these videos, that I talk about in these videos, I still make those mistakes myself. I still am guilty of making those mistakes. But I know what is right, and I know what is wrong. That's why I talk about it. Because I want to make sure that you can fix it, and I want to make sure I keep myself accountable. So I'm a human. I mess up at times. And this is a great example of what we talked about in the last video about you have to be comfortable in the trades that you're taking. Because if you're not, you will not hold it to see out the trade. You will panic. You will be emotional. And this is exactly what happened to me, right? I should have held this. There was no reason to exit this trade. I'll share with you why I did right? And why I got spooked out of it. But when you look at it in hindsight, you can clearly see there was never a reason to exit. So 
The reason I entered this trade today was 54 um, was 5490. I'm gonna go ahead and go into that five minute chart, and you guys can. Sorry, it wasn't 54. Yeah, 50 5530. My bad. 5530. 5490 was the pre market level. 5530 was a level that I was focused on in the pre market, and or yeah, pre market, and then into the market open. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the two minute time frame, and I'm gonna talk you through where I got spooked out of this trade. So this morning, as the market opened, we saw a very clear pre market high around 5530. And we started to see the market trying to hold above it, right? So I said to the group, I'm going to try this long on SPX above 5530. And I'm going to look to see if we can hold 5530, retest hold above that previous pre-market high, and see if we can continue higher, right, for that upside continuation. Now, at this time, the NASDAQ was starting to reject 19400. And this was a little bit concerning to me, right? I knew that if the NASDAQ was going to reject 19.4, this could cause some aggressive downside, right? This could give back this pre-market upside. And if I was too aggressive on SPX here, I could be very, very uh, smacked, right? I could get very aggressively smacked here. So I was sort of spooked by that. And when I saw that, I said, hey, let me go ahead and get out of this thing. I'm not loving it. However, you can see that my level was a little bit incorrect. Where I should have had this level was 55.25. You can see it had that push, had that hold, nice hold. Had the push, had the pullback, nice hold. And so I did re-enter above that 55.30 again, right? I did re-enter this trade. But again, as soon as I got to break even, I was sort of looking at that size and I said, let me go ahead and protect myself. And if I was in less size, I would not have had that thought in my mind, right? If I was in less size here, I would have said 55.25, stay in the trade, all is good, right? But I was in too much size and I did get spooked out of it. And that is on me. That is a mistake that I need to continue to work on as I size up these trades. However, I did revenge myself here in a very big way. And that is on the QQQ. It's actually not even because of the QQQ, a little bit because of the QQQ on that 468 hold. But I longed the QQQ today using the NASDAQ futures as my guide. So right here, you can see I longed the QQQ. I had about 20 con 200 contracts, and this was the right size, right? I had a good size here. This is my comfort zone, about that 30,000 mark, about that 10 to 12% of my account. You, got, you guys saw... In that last trade, it was about 20%, a little bit larger, right? Too much size in that one. So I was in my comfort zone here, and I performed so much better. And why did I take this trade on the QQQ? It was the most beautiful and sexual, and you guys know I love that word, break and retest of 19400. Absolutely perfect. Pre-market, or sorry, early morning rejection, break, retest, and what a hold at 19.4 today. And that is exactly where I longed the QQQ. That 19.4 level is also, if we zoom out, is also the exact previous highs right here. You guys can see right here, that 19.4 level, perfect previous highs, turning into a perfect support today on a break and retest. And that is exactly where I took it long. And that is where I revenged myself today on that QQQ action. All right, guys, so the last trade that we're gonna go ahead and review is AMD, and once again, this is a break and retest. What do you know? It's another break and retest. Can't believe it. So AMD today, you can see I had this little scalp today, and this was a scalp off of the 145 retest level. Had a good size in it, made a nice little profit. Could have held it longer. I did scale out pretty early because this was sort of end of day, it was around 12 o'clock, and I was just looking for a little cherry on top. What I was doing here, to be quite honest, was a uh, to offset my risk on the swing trade. So my swing trade, I'm holding. I have a lot of confidence, and I'm not scaling out of that one yet. I did scale it a little, but I have core positions here. What I did was I went ahead and I took a uh, same week expiration to offset the risk that I may take overnight on this trade, right? So I wanted to try a little aggressive scalp to try to make some profits, right? Make about $3,000, and it would offset my risk on my swing trade. So why did I do this? Why did I take this trade? Well, if I go to this hourly chart, you can see, once again, there is a previous major rejection point right here at $145. 145, 145, 145. Bam, bam, and bam. 
Now, if we go over to today and we look at that short-term reaction at that level, take a look at this, guys. Look at this beauty right here. So today on intraday, five-minute chart, AMD, you guys can see we had an early morning push, 145 rejection. Break, guess what? Retest. <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> Retest, 145, hold, entry point, bam. Same thing, again. Same exact thing every damn time. Love it, love it, love it. I hope you're seeing it. I hope it's making sense. All right, guys. So the moment you've been waiting for, the year-to-date P&L, we're going to pull it on interactive brokers. We're also going to pull it on E-Trade. So we're going to have them both. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Realize Summary. We're going to go right here, the magical number, their magical phrase, year-to-date, and we're going to go ahead and view it right here. You guys see this is January 1st to January or August 14th. That does not include today. So we have to add the 26000 from today. If we go here, we can go ahead and look at everything. You can see I probably should not trade shares because my shares, uh, I'm down $3,900. Now, I could trade shares with a break and retest. It's the same exact thing. I don't know why I lost money on shares. I think I tried to dip by Tesla with shares and ended up losing. That was a long time ago. I don't even remember when this was. But you can see right there on shares, I'm right on the year. However, that's not the meat and potatoes. The meat and potatoes is equity and index options. And so what we're going to do, is we're going to scroll all the way down through all of the trades. These are all my trades, all my trades. Ooh, look at this one. That's a big one. SMCI, bam. Nice. That's a nice one. Let's keep going. Oh, big loser. <laughs> big loser. SPX, love it. You know SPX can do that. Oh, another big one. 59,000, 60,000. Oh, SPX, nice. Uh, so, yeah, uh, some big ones, some, some big wins, some big losses, and the grand finale. There it is, guys, right there. 313,000 plus today. Uh, we're looking at 313, 436. Let's add in today, uh, which was, let's just say, let's just add the 26. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit off, but 26, 515, 340,000. So 340,000 is my year to date PL in interactive brokers. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to E-Trade and I'll share with you guys my E-Trade year to date as well. All right, guys. So here is E-Trade. And in this account, I pretty much just hold a lot of cash and money market mutual funds. It's a 5.3% yield. I love that. I'm going to keep my cash here. And uh, year to date trading gains, you can see it up on the top left, $60,000, 59875 That is including some unrealized gains, which right now the unrealized gains are about eleven or 12000 so realized is about 12000 less, but all in all, about a $60,000 on E-Trade year to date. Um, so if we add that to the last one, we're sitting at just about a $400,000 year between E-Trade and uh, Interactive Brokers. And if I go to Tradezilla and we go back to the dashboard and we have both E-Trade and, and Interactive Brokers connected, I don't have the unrealized gains for NVIDIA in here yet, so it's going to be slightly smaller. But I'm going to go ahead, and here it is, guys. This is my year to date. Oh, let me go ahead and pull this up one second. I got to move my face. This is my year to date, and it's all documented. Every single trade documented in Tradezilla. It has been forever, and it always will be. And you guys can see right here, 377000 That's not including the unrealized gains on, on NVIDIA which is going to push that up close to that 400k mark. $400,000 on the year with a 53% win rate. How does that happen? Your winners are larger than your losers. Win rate's positive. You, all you need is a positive win rate and a good risk reward on your trades. And here it is, guys. That is the year to date in August 15th. So we have about four more months, September, October, November, December. What can we do in four months? Can we get to that 500k mark? We shall see, but there you go, guys. Confirmed it all in Interactive Brokers, confirmed it in E-Trade, and there it is for you to see. So I hope that gives you some hope. I hope it gives you some inspiration that it is possible. I'm sharing transparent as much as I can. The only other way for you to double-check this is to be right here, and if you want to come over and see it, come on in. Um, but actually, don't come in. Do not come to my house <laughs> because that would be a bad day for you. Um, but anyways, <laughs> what, a, what a year. 
So there it is, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Well, I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I truly enjoyed making this one. I did have some fun having the camera around. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, you know, trying to get more comfortable in that type of vlog style. I did have a lot of fun doing it. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to let me know down below, guys. If you enjoyed it, it's going to inspire me to do more of it. Um, I sincerely hope that you are gaining value from my channel. I hope you are, right? Sincerely, I do this for pretty much free, man. YouTube does not pay me much money to do this. I make this content because I truly enjoy it, and I love to see some of you message me and say that what you're learning is helping you. Um, press that like button if it is. Subscribe to the channel if it is. If you're wondering what I'm going to do for the rest of the night, I'm probably going to go ahead and play some Overwatch. That's probably one thing. Maybe watch some, some movies on Netflix. Maybe watch a show. Uh, and that's about it, man. So... Have a fantastic rest of your night. Have a fantastic rest of your day whenever you are watching this. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know down below. Press that like button. And I will see you guys on the live stream tomorrow. Peace out.